Hi, George here. And I occasionally get questions about how to make the interface easier to see or easier to use inside of Photoshop Elements. So let me go through some of the main things that you can do here to improve the visibility of the different parts of the interface. We'll start off with the light and dark mode. This works in version 2024 and newer. And go up to edit, come down to preferences and general. And it's right up here, UI mode. We're in the light mode right now, but there's a light and also a dark mode. Sometimes the dark mode can help you out. It depends upon what your particular issues are with your vision. Let's take a look at this. Choose dark and choose OK. Now this requires a relaunch. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that real fast and we'll see what this looks like. And there we go. There's the dark mode. And let's bring our picture back up again. And there it is. So the mode you like working in, it's up to you. It's a personal preference, but some people may find this a bit easier to see with the white lettering over here and white symbols on a dark background. I prefer the older look. OK, let's go ahead. We'll switch back over again. Edit, Preferences, General. And once again, that's the change right there. OK, let's now go back over to the Preferences again. Edit and Preferences. And back to General. Two more things in here you may want to take care of. One is Allow Floating Documents in Advanced Mode. I always have that thing checked, but by default, that's not checked. So I recommend checking that. And also, I like using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. And that's that checkbox right here. Again, this is not normally checked, so make sure you check that one. And there are a few more things you can do in here to improve the visibility of different parts of Photoshop Elements. Some may take some experimentation for you to find the settings that you like the best. Come down to Display and Cursors. You can change what the cursor looks like. I normally just use Normal Brush Tip, and I use Standard. Those are the defaults, and I have no problems with those. You can go for Standard, which is just the symbol up here. I prefer seeing the brush tip size like that. Now you have normal brush tip and full brush tip. The difference is if you're using a soft edge brush, the normal brush tip is where it's going to be solid color. And then as it fades out, it's going to be outside of that. Full brush size shows you it clear out to where the final fade out is. And I found that this is not as good for being accurate as the normal brush tip size. If you want to, you also can put a crosshair in there. Sometimes very useful for real precise work. But most of the time, that just gets in the way of the vision, so I leave that one unchecked as well. And then down here, we have UI Scale Factor. Now, there are only two options here, small and large. Large is good if you have a larger monitor, and small is good for a smaller monitor. Now, most of the time, automatic is the right choice. But you can try them out to see if there is a difference. Now, if you're on a smaller monitor and you try a large, you're going to have part of the interface cut off. You won't be able to see the whole window. So I'd always recommend sticking with automatic, but you do have those two options. Now, the reason why there isn't a slider control in here, so you can adjust these things to different settings, is because over here on the tools panel, all these icons in here, these are images, and there's just two sets of images inside of elements. One's the large size and one's the small size. So there isn't a variable image size over here. I'm sure they could make it variable if they wanted to, but they don't. So because there's just the two sizes, that's why we have two sizes over here. A few more things you can look at in here. You can change the transparency look, although I've never found a reason to do that. On the guides and grid lines, you can change the guideline right here or the grid line. Now, this is sometimes useful if you happen to be working on a project that you need to have guidelines and the project is very close in color to the grid line. You can go ahead and change that to a different color just to make it easier to see. But most of the time, I found that this is a very good option or a very good choice. The last one in here under the preferences is down here where it says type. And on this one, it's the font preview size. Medium is kind of your normal, and it's really small. Let me just show you what that looks like. Over here to the Type tool, and come down here. This is where our text is. Click on this, and it's this little itty bitty type over here. That is the font preview right there. Now you see a lot more typefaces in here. Much more of your list is showing, but the preview size is really, really small. I don't happen to like that. I like a much larger preview size, so we can fix that. Back up to Edit, come down to Preferences, and General, and Type. And I always set mine to the biggest option. That's huge right here. Choose OK. And we'll take a look at this again. And there we go. Much, much larger sample size. Much easier to see what you're actually working with. This is very useful if you're working with fancier typefaces that have some detail, like this one up here. Kind of a Halloween-ish kind of a typeface. And the dingbat fonts like that. Anything where it's important to get a really good view of the text. Having the huge size here is much, much better. 
Let's now come over here to the main working area. And that's this background you see here, left and right side. If I zoom out a bit, that's the zoom wheel I talked about just a bit ago. This background area, you can change the color or the value of this. Right click, you have default, black, dark gray, medium gray, light gray, or custom. There's black, there's a light gray, there's a default, it's a little bit lighter than light gray. So you can choose whichever background you want for your particular use. Now keep in mind the darker colors in here for your background will make the colors in your image here up here brighter just by contrast. It'll appear more washed out the lighter it gets. And the default is the lightest that it goes. So it really depends upon your use. Again, if you're say setting up a web page and the web page had black backgrounds for your pictures, then definitely go for a black background here to get a better sense of how this will look against that black background. For me personally, I always stick with the default. Now, one thing I don't recommend doing is going down here and select a custom color. You can do this. You can come in here and give it a colorized background. But as soon as you do that, the color out here is going to confuse your eye on the colors in here. And if you're concerned about color accuracy, this is going to cause you problems on that. So it's best to leave the background here in a neutral gray tone. Again, I'll go back to the default like that. One more thing you can do over here, right hand side, and that's on these thumbnails for the layers. We actually have a couple of different options over here for our layers. Go up to this little three dot icon here, click on that, come down to panel options. And in here we have different options for the thumbnails. The middle option is the default and that looks just like this. The larger option gives you bigger thumbnails, choose okay, there we go. It's just a little bit larger. And that can be useful to help see what you're looking at. Now notice how things are getting cut off on the right hand side here just a bit. You can come right over the dividing line here. You see a double arrow, click and drag at that point, And you can drag this out as far as it will go. And we now can see a bit more of what's happening on the right hand side. Let's go back to the panel options again. You can choose none and just have text in there. I've never found a use for that. You can go very, very small. This is occasionally useful if you really don't need to see that thumbnail in there, but you want to see a lot of your layers at the same time. That can be very useful having this set at the small setting. Again, my personal setting is the medium option right here. And down below here we have layer bounds and entire document is two options on that. And let me show you what's all about that one. I'll just put in a shape just like that, just a big white paw print thing right here. And let's make our thumbnails as large as we can for this. Go clear to the large size, there we go. And you can kind of see that paw print right there. But we're seeing the whole document size and where the paw print fits on that page. That is the entire document layout. Let's go over here, take a look at that again. Panel options, that's the entire document. If I want layer bounds and choose to okay, we're now just seeing just that image. We're no longer seeing it in relationship to the entire document. Again, this is personal preference. I personally prefer to have this shown in relationship to the document as opposed to just showing me the whole symbol like that. But again, there are times when one or the other may be the right choice depending upon your particular project. Okay, I'll set that back again. There we go. And the final thing in here is just on panels. Go up here to window and all of your panels are available right down here from the drop down list. Your currently visible panel is shown here with the check mark. This is our layers panel. If I change over here to the graphics panel, there it is, there's our graphics panel right hand side. And again, that one is now check mark. So you'll be seeing the active panel over here with that check mark. Normally inside of Photoshop Elements, you only see one panel at a time over here, but you can see more if you want to. That's a different option. Bottom right hand corner, get this little arrow way down there. Click on that and you can choose a custom workspace. Click on custom workspace and then all of a sudden things change. Notice that all the buttons down here have gone away. They've now moved up here. So we have layers, there's the effects, here's the filters, this is the styles. This is more how things run over in Adobe Photoshop. But an interesting part about this is I can then float a panel out like this, just float a panel all by itself. And I could then have my layers and my graphics showing at the same time or any combination of those things. And I can still adjust my previews in here. So you can, if you need to, show multiple panels at the same time just by changing to a custom workspace. If you wanna get back to the default setting, just go down here, click on that arrow again, click on basic workspace and you're back to the default layout. Now on my videos here on YouTube, I keep things at their default settings most of the time because that's how most people will have their 
computers set up. But there's no reason why you have to stick with that. Feel free to change the way that the interface is working to make it the easiest for you to use for your particular projects. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Give me a like that way. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Doesn't cost you anything and that we won't lose out on any future videos as they come out. And I'll see you next time.